almost half of India's labor force works outside, directly under the sun. From construction workers to agricultural laborers, this is the sector that is bearing the full brunt of heat waves. With the average global temperature set to reach the 1.5 degree Celsius threshold, any time next five years, heat waves and temperature extremes are going to become more common. To protect the most vulnerable among us, they need to be cautioned and protected against the heat. How exactly do we do that? South Asia is actually a hotspot for heat stress. Uh, and we know that the Indian subcontinent is going to see both uh, increasing intensity of heat waves, uh, increasing frequency. So that means heat waves are going to become more common, they're going to be more intense, and also that they are going to last longer. This has already begun. This year, summer arrived in India in March itself and quickly went on to break records. May too has been unkind to the north of India. Just like climate policy, a comprehensive heat policy is needed to not only control the damage the heat can have on the population, but also come up with a long-term strategy. I think we are at a point that we really need to do something about our heat policy. Uh, that's also because we are continuously building in our cities and towns and villages also now. So with so much of concrete and stone and tar and all of that, all the materials which absorb a lot of heat and are radiating it back, uh, I think uh, heat policy is something very crucial. Yes, in 2013, Ahmedabad became the first South Asian city to have a heat action plan. The plan came in the wake of the deadly 2010 heat wave when the temperature touched 46.8 degrees Celsius and over 800 people died in the city in just a week. One of the most successful things about the Ahmedabad's plan was the extreme heat warnings. Yellow alert for a heat day advisory, orange alert for a heat alert day and red alert for an extreme heat alert day. The three different warning levels corresponded to increasing levels of outreach, preparatory activity and response. A clear communication plan has also been one of the features of Ahmedabad HAP. For example, when IMD issues a heat warning, the municipal council of the city gets into action. On one hand, awareness campaigns are initiated using various modes of communication. Simultaneously, the state readies its emergency teams to deal with all aspects of the heat wave. Since then, the plan has provided a strong foundation on which over 23 states and 100 cities across India have built their own policies, with significant help from National Disaster Management Authority. In terms of what's in these uh, heat action plans, so basically, you know, they look at uh, an early warning system. So how do you predict when a heat wave is going to happen? And the Indian Meteorological Department, the IMD, of course, has a large role to play there. The second component is all about sort of raising community awareness and just uh, using media, things like what you're doing about publicizing what heat waves are, how to take uh, action, what should be done about it, how can you prepare for it. The third component is in terms of the of building capacity of the health system. So the medical professionals, so the doctors, the nurses, uh, all of those people, to be for them to be trained to identify these as heat-related illnesses and to respond to them. And finally, fourth component of these heat action plans deals with the more long-term uh, planning. So how do how do we adapt uh, to heat? heat waves and heat stress on an ongoing basis. Great, but do they work? So this is, of course, the million dollar question. <laughs> and uh, so the short answer to that, this is that there's a great deal of variability in terms of how they're implemented. Naturally, we know that our states have different capacity and also the degree of urgency associated with heat as a heat, act, you know, heat waves itself varies greatly and is uh, determined in a great deal by past experience, right? In other words, we really do not know, since India is a huge country. For example, we know about Ahmedabad because a study was done on how effective the plan was in reducing deaths. According to the pilot evaluation of the plan, summertime deaths were reduced. 
mortality rates on the hottest days dropped by 27% after HAP implementation. Yet, there are skeptics. See, we are good at uh, drafting some of these policies, but we never make sure uh, any action takes place on the ground. Simple things like, you know, painting the rooftops white, making sure there's a lot of greenery, simple things like that. Nobody ever implements and there are no agencies that are ensuring any kind of regulation and monitoring. It seems NDMA is listening. Ahead of the 2021 season, it urged cities to implement cool roofs as part of their HAPs to minimize the impact of the heat. When roofs are either painted with solar reflective paints or white membranes so that less heat is absorbed, they are called cool roofs. According to 2022 reports, NDMA is supporting two studies, one of which focuses on vulnerable groups like the outdoor workforce who work under the sun. The study hopes to identify and map the exposure of these vulnerable populations to extreme heat, so that a targeted approach can be taken in finding solutions. How vulnerable you are to heat depends on factors such as the geography of where you live, your income, do you live in a pakka house or not, do you have access to green spaces, can you afford to take an off from work, are you malnourished, do you have any existing illness and so on. So can we put the people who are actually affected by heat at the centre of it? So I would encourage for there to be you know, participatory mechanisms that can act get input from communities, from people about uh, you know, how are they dealing with, what is their current level of preparedness to heat stress and potentially other climate related vulnerabilities or environmental vulnerabilities in general. That's something and B, how can we then better address this vulnerability and I feel that's one of the key things that are missing currently from our current heat action plans and heat, plan, heat health plan. So what do you think about the heat policies of your states and cities? Does yours even have one? Let us know in the comments and please don't forget to subscribe to Deccan Herald.